this is a CTA masterclass on emerging tech class in session a CTA masterclass on emerging tech so the first question then obviously has to be what is emerging tech so so uh, i'll describe emerging tech as tech that's on the cutting edge so it's not really fully implemented for everyone to use but it's available for a select few and it's making changes uh, in whatever field that they're working on so any any technology that's not fully operationalized to help everyone else but it's making an impact in the field it's in so emerging tech could be some of this the whole vr techno- technology that's smart technology ai a subset of you guys are using that would be considered emerging tech so so we've there's, got a- there's baseline tech that everyone uses uh people soft let's say for example for hr uh that's common here yeah any okay. hr guys in the room in hr okay so it's a uh, sap that's used uh, sap is also a- another use that okay mm. yeah so more of the products that you use on a reg- day-to-day basis and the technology that's used that could be considered baseline tech emerging tech is some stuff that's on the cutting edge okay i like that we've got a sort of a context on what emerging tech is but what i think would be nice then is let's let's go back as far as you can or, or you go back as far as you can and explain to us the history of tech um so that we can get a better understanding let's demystify this this thing called tech tech sounds like it's only used by a certain group of techies yeah. but tech tech should be in my view used by every single people no matter the industry and in this space we've also got some people within the education industry uh, i'll keep shouting out different people as the conversation goes just to sort of paint context so Alex let's go f- as far back as you can demystify this whole thing called tech and let's walk up until 2024 so that so that the room and myself can have a understanding of what tech is so so tech to me is an enabler do you guys remember when there were no cell phones apart from the guys who were born in 2000 plus <laughs> do you guys how many people remember before cell phones okay where you'd make a date and you say 20th century at 2 o'clock you had to make it uh it was different then uh but now you can't live without it you know hey on my way you know just down the street tech is an enabler to me uh does anyone remember back in the day when we didn't have computers in offices no You guys don't you remember that? Oh, I can see OG over here. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember back in the day when we had the big binders. We had the you know T accounts, ledger accounts. You kind of had to do that then ulko na pencil then you you erase and kind of like so tech has moved a lot. If you look at from 2000 maybe 1998 to where we are it's moved a lot. Uh and it's actually going to move even further. So I call tech an enabler. Google Maps for example when you guys want to move anywhere that's all you use you just go Google Maps I want to go to Hemingways and mm-hmm. takes you to where it's supposed to be so to me tech is an enabler and everyone should be leveraging it if someone in here does not have ChatGPT you're doing a disservice for yourself meta ai is coming with a competitor tool you want to make sure at least you have that i love that um for me from a context of tech i always think of 1995 and the reason why i say 1995 i think of bc to ad throw in there the spiritual context before computers to after digital and mm. for me the turning point for that is 1995 and and there's there's the reason for this um uh, in 1995 something called windows 95 came Windows 95 was a serious game changer. And the reason why I say that is because there's this program that is no longer there called Windows Internet Explorer that was on there. Mm, grrr, grrr, yeah, grrr. Yeah. Show your age right yeah. now. <laughs> 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 that was how we logged on to this thing called the internet. And that was such a pivotal dial up. That sound was what we made when we removed the cable from our mob our landlines and plugged it into the into a modem that was connected to the computer and that's how we logged onto the internet um that is so pivotal because that is when you should have your mental digital shift 
So one of the things that this, that has to happen in the room today is that you have to have another shift like that. Your mind, you have to, you have to understand that one of the things that we know who are born before um, BC, before 1995, is change is constant. We have seen change happen. I like what yeah. Alex says. Alex said right now. Another very pivotal time has been in your lifetime, and it is called COVID. COVID was an accelerator to the acceptance of digital globally. True? Like you are in this room. So I like again, and I'm going to throw this back at Alex. I want to paint the context and I want to begin chopping in at your mind because we are in a time where the graph and the acceleration is extreme. So Alex, back to you. In terms of tech, what does tech look like? Again, I'll ask that question. In 2024. Uh, a lot is going to change in the next couple of years. Uh, but I also wanted to premise something. So I know there are folks in the room that are a little bit younger. And I tell my team all the time. There are people who are going to graduate from school now. In five years, they'll know as much as I know in 25 years. Mm. I'm sure you guys are beginning to see that. So seniority is no longer the case. And that's why we really have to be good at what we do and making sure we're leveraging technology. Because these young folks are coming in to win. As soon as you tell them, hey, do this task, task, they're going in, and all of a sudden they're like, hey, dad, I got it. I'm like, how did you get that so quickly? That's the same thing that I get from my team. So we really need to dial up our technology use. So the biggest shift that's happening, that has happened in the last couple of years, is AI. How many of you use ChatGPT? There's some people not using AI. So you have to use AI. Mm. Yes, that's, that's just the bottom line. Because it helps you, it's, a, it's an assistant for you. So when I was in Big Four, usually you have assist, associates, seniors. So think of AI at this point as an associate who can help you do the work really well. Mm. Throw out a question and it'll answer it at least at a good level, at least you have an idea, because it's really, really important to do that. What AI is doing is a game changer, and the democratization of it is even more of a game changer. In the education industry, it's easy for you to just have AI give you the Harvard Business School cases. Back in the day, you had to buy them. It costed a lot of money for you. Let's say you're in Strath or University of Nairobi and you wanted a Harvard Business case. It cost you probably $1,000. That's a lot of money back then. So now you can go in, contextualize, and have a business case, have a type business case, and be able to leverage it the best way that you can. So in healthcare, let's say in psychiatry, when people are having episodes, you know, if someone is having an episode, what you do is that you can wear this, and it calms you down. Uh, in medicine, when you're operating on something that's new, you can be similar with a doctor in John Hopkins, he's directing you on how to do something. There's so many changes that are happening. I'll give you guys an example of a use case that I've actually seen. Accounting organizations, let's say uh, finance, uh, let's say accounts payable. Do you guys have, you have accounts payable. So accounts payable with 1,000 people for an organization that has 100,000 people. You can automate all of that. And I've actually seen for only five people to be able to run that. That's a game changer. Because everything that we do in, a, in finance, what you do, you wake up in the morning, hey, did you have the reconciliation? Where's it, where's it report? You know, what's the status of it? All of that can be out of it in using dashboards, using AI. So tech in 2024 is truly a game changer. I know we've talked about this when we talk about our PA, we've talked about bots, the different revolutions that have come in. But what is different this year is the speed of change. Mm. You guys looked at 3.0 Chat GPT, and now you have a payable version, which is 4.0. When you get a chance to see Meta AI, uh, we have behind that, there's a Llama 3. Now it's Llama 3.1. You can do a lot more. And Chat GPT, for those folks who use, the user prompt can be 60 words, maybe 100. Llama, which is Meta AI, can use maybe a thousand. 
So there's a lot more you can do in terms of instructions. Bottom line is that AI is going to be a game changer and you guys have to get on board. I love that. Um, I want to pull you back still. We're coming, we're coming and we're going to have an extended conversation about AI. I don't want the complexity of, of how it may hit you to scare you or, or to confuse you. We're still at this conversation about tech. We've understood the evolution of tech is constant. We've understood, we've had this word called Imagine Tech. We've heard that there's new tech coming. Um, um, Alex has painted an amazing context of where um, tech has come from. We've sort of had this painting, this picture of the mobile phone, and now we're sort of hearing about 2024. But still on tech, just before we get to AI, I want to just ask the most layman question, and let's break it down in words. What are the advantages of tech? Of, of tech? Um, I don't want to talk about the positives, I mean the negatives. We're going to get in the negatives in the Q&A, because I know security and all of those other things. But let's layman this thing. Why tech? What are the positives of tech? It's, it's an enabler. It makes your work easier. Okay, let's break if, down enabler. It yeah, makes your work if, easier? Uh -huh. Yeah, if I'm moving from point A, I didn't know the direction of this place, I just put it on Google, and it was able to get me here. I'll give you an example in your world. Uh, let's say you go through your interface uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, the interface that you have on YouTube, on who's looking at your videos. Immediately it tells you, hey, there are people in Japan watching your videos. Mm, the analytics. As, yes. Some of them might not be speaking English like you are. What it does for you is it translates for you. This conversation in Japanese. So that's an enabler by, it, by itself. It's helping you reach a lot more people than you can. Mm. Look at the editing world. Uh, you know, anyone who's doing editing now, it's a lot different than it was. Uh, look at your posts. Uh, my post on fire. <laughs> you know, when I post, I put it on, you know, Meta AI. It changes for me. It says, had a, an interesting conversation. And I say, make it more interesting. Make it really, really interesting. And it changes it for you and you post it. That's an easy way of talking about it informally. But formally, from a business perspective, it's a game changer. I talked about a, a finance organization of 1,000 people reduced to five. Reduced to five, but made, making it a lot more efficient and effective in what we do. Yes. So I that's why I say it's an enabler and a game changer. I love it. The bigger picture of what he's saying, it's an enabler and a game changer. To layman this, it makes things, your work, faster. It makes your work cheaper. It makes your work cross borders. There's no borders. Your barriers as a business is no longer this... Uh, war 50, market of 57 million people called Kenyans, 60 million people called Kenyans. You have the opportunity to reach the world. I'll give an example of my industry. This conversation that I am having in with you right now, if I throw this video as an upload into, into tech, it does the translation. These glasses that you're seeing, I'm going to be able to go to Japan and as the person is speaking, I will be hearing it already translated so are you understanding this thing? And again, I don't want you to think that this thing is locked to a certain industry. This thing is for all industries, including the industry that you are in. So Imagine Tech is for you as well. I don't want you to think that this thing is not for you. Every single person in this room, Imagine Tech is for you. Or have I lied? Uh, yes, and you haven't lied. Oh <laughs> you haven't lied. <laughs> Uh, but what I also want to say is that you don't have to have these gadgets to use tech. True. Uh, you know, ChatGPT is free. You know, Meta AI is going to be embedded within your Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. So it's going to be free. So there's that shift that's becoming a little bit different because it used to be, yes, you had to pay a lot of money to get this. Yes, this is cool. You know, you can, you know, take nice videos, take nice photos and send them to a whole lot of people. But now you need to be able to leverage technology in whatever field that you're in. So it's not just for a select few. That's the shift right now that's happening. Let me add one more thing. How many people in this room are coders? Like can code? Okay. I love it. Okay. What, what is the biggest shift that you're seeing right now? I'm using AI to generate a lot of code. He's using AI to generate a lot of code. Yes. Uh, where, where did you go to school, if you don't mind me asking?
Okay. He said a subset of Nairobi University. Okay. So you had to be really smart to do it. Okay. So, not to bust your bubble, that now anyone can code. All you have to have is an interface and say, can you write for me code that does X, Y, Z? I know some people in environmental sciences here, they say, can you write for me code that's supposed to aggregate data from the developing world as relates to climate change and the impact of climate change? It does that for you. So it used to be tough for us to be able to code. Those were barriers for entry. Now you can do it in a fraction of a time. It used to be, yes, you had a whole organization of really smart people uh, you know, in the background just saying, we're coding, don't talk to us. Now it's democratized for all of us to be able to use. And for the coders, because you understand the engine behind it, now you can learn a little bit about the architecture and how everything interfaces with each other. So that's a very practical example. It's a game changer. Yeah. I'm loving this. I had you mention climate change and there's people in the room uh, representing Jacob's Ladder Africa who are leading in the authorities in climate change within this continent, within Kenya and also within the region. Big shout out to Manda. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Imagine tech, we're all on the same ship. Now let's enter this thing called AI. Yes. Uh, he's already touched on it, but I want him to, uh, to take us at a pace where we all understand.